So last night I tried staying up for Kamala's, uh, you know, the town hall CNN interview, and I felt I stayed up long enough to see some clips. But now that I've woken up and the internet has had enough time to go through and get all of the best clips together and kind of get a, a, a breath of did Kamala do good or did Kamala do bad? And honestly, the answer to that question is if you're on Kamala's side, you probably think she killed it. And if you're anybody with an IQ above 70, you, you realize that she kind of stumbled, she fell and, and landed flat on her face. For example, a voter asked her, how will you be different from Biden? This was her response. Considering you have been in the position of vice president for the past four years under the Biden administration, how can we expect you to deviate from the direction of that administration compared to your own? How can we differentiate your policy and your beliefs from that of Biden's? That's a great question, and thank you. Well, first of all, my administration will not be a continuation of the Biden administration. I bring to this role my own ideas and my own experience. I represent a new generation of leadership on a number of issues and believe that we have to actually take new approaches. For example, what we talked about in terms of housing. I, my experience that leads to that priority includes what I did to take on the big banks around the foreclosure crisis when I brought billions of dollars to homeowners that were the subject of predatory lending. I know what home ownership means to the American people, not to mention what it meant to my mother who worked very hard and saved up so that by the time I was a teenager, she was able to buy our first home. I bring to it my experience actually taking care of my mother when she was sick, and it was, as it turned out, dying from cancer. And so I know what it means and have the experience of taking care of an elderly relative, and I have raised children. And so I bring to my priorities and will, as president, a new approach and a new idea, frankly, about what we need to do to deal with the sandwich generation. My biggest issue with this is I feel like she does not represent a new form of leadership. I feel like she has been a suit basically her whole life. She's a proud prosecutor, and then her time as a politician and a bureaucrat, I feel like that's kind of interwoven. I don't know. Obviously, I'm on Team MAGA, right? But whenever I hear this, and I'm trying to sit back and be as honest as I can, I just don't get inspired. Like, this leaves me so much more to be desired like there's just so much more to be desired and kamala harris was asked to name one thing that she was trying to get done or willing to get done as part of her legislative agenda and <laughs> i mean come on she was asked what is one thing one thing my question is this if you could accomplish only one major policy goal that required congressional action what would it be and why well, there's not just one. I have to be honest with you, Carol. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to happen, but let's. I think that maybe part of this point that I, how I think about it, is we've got to get past this era of politics and partisan politics, slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country, and that means working across the aisle. I've done that before. We did it around whether it be what we were able to accomplish with the bike partisan infrastructure deal or some of the work that we have done in terms of dealing with gun safety. But we've got to work across the aisle, and it is my commitment to work with Democrats, with Republicans, with independents to deal with a number of issues, whether it be what we need to do in terms of housing and creating legislation that creates incentives for that, what we need to do to reinstate the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do whether it be what we need to do to actually invest in a substantial way in the industries of the future, in American-based manufacturing, in American-based industries where American workers and union workers have those jobs in a way that is good-paying jobs that gives people the dignity they deserve. Look. All of those areas I plan on working across the aisle and with Congress including the issue of immigration, which we've got to fix. Is it, I, I was just thinking in my head as I was watching this, I was like, isn't that like the sales team saying, hey, we're going to work with the marketing team and make sure we get this project done? Like, isn't that the bare minimum? And then going to school, getting a degree, getting a job in that field that you're getting a degree in and earn, earning a, uh, a livable wage? Isn't that Trump's whole thing? And like making America smart again, wealthy again. It's like all of the these talking points Actually, the talking point to the right. 
And it's like they're being co-opted and thrown into this word salad to be like delivered as it's something new. But you look into it, it's like little Trump nuggets and Donald nuggets and RFK nuggets. It's all the little Tulsi nuggets. They're all like sprinkled within there. You're like, wait, this is just what they're selling. Just repackaged in honestly a really word salad way. I don't know. Voter, will American citizens pay for the benefits and subsidies of illegal aliens? If so, how much money will be allocated? Meaning he's okay with some, but just not a lot. Here's her response. Regarding the rapid increase in the migrant population, how will you ensure that every immigrant is integrated into American society safely? What benefits and subsidies will you provide them with? And how long will these benefits and subsidies last for an individual? Most importantly, Will the American citizens' taxes pay for these benefits and subsidies? And if so, how much, money, how much money will be allocated? Thank you, Jackson. Let's start with this. America's immigration system is broken, and it needs to be fixed. And it's been broken for a long time. And part of what we need to do is always prioritize what we need to do to strengthen our border. I will tell you I'm the only person in this race among the two choices that voters have personally prosecuted transnational criminal organizations in the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent a significant part of my career making sure that our border is secure and that we do not allow criminals in and we don't allow that kind of trafficking to happen and come into our country. And as, the, as my opponent has proven himself, he would prefer to run on the problem instead of fix the problem. Now, I'm not too sure about you guys, but I actually didn't hear uh, an answer to that. But one thing that I wanted to show you guys was this kid's from Drexel University. Uh, you guys know me. I come from a paintball background. They actually had a pretty wicked paintball program and won their world championships in 2002, 2010, and 2019. Drexel University, actually not bad at paintball. You know what's really bad at answering questions, though? is Kamala Harris and for some reason this guy who's supposedly an undecided voter it just kind of resonated with me and this is where we're going to end the video so I'll see you guys in just a second listen to what he has to say is when I believe it was you that asked the weakness question what is your biggest weakness and she brought up that she has people around her that she can trust that she can get the answer from in my line of work in IT I don't expect everybody to know the answer i expect them to know how to get the answer and her specifically th that resonated with me because i don't need a president that knows everything or thinks they know everything because that's not what america needs they need to put the right people in the right place to lead the country efficiently one person can't lead this country they need a team and that's what resonated with me and i totally agree with this a president one person does not run the entire country that's why on Trump's ballot, not only are you getting JD, we get RFK, we get Tulsi Gabbard, we get Elon Musk, we get Vivek Swamy. There is a coalition of people on the right side that feels like the Avengers at this point. And it feels like the left has Kamal Harris, Waltz, Cheney, and Obama. Like that, and you know, a lot of these celebrities, but celebrities don't sway me in the slightest. But let me know what you guys think about all of this. Did, did Kamala crush the CNN town hall uh, interview? Like the title of this video. <laughs> but if you guys like the way the words are flowing out my mouth, please share and subscribe. Everything that I see on the internet that I have an opinion on, I want to share with you. And that's what this channel really has become. So if you guys uh, are picking up what I'm putting down, if you guys want to sniff each other's farts and agree with me, cool. If you want to whiff them away and say, yo, this is my opinion, fart up in here and then have us smell it, give our own, uh, you know, taste and, and review, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I don't know why I uh, made a metaphor like that, but <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.